the Scalia vacancy, the Garland nomination. There are actually a, two essays on, on that of the, of the 80 on Merrick Garland's nomination. Here's my view. Um, and a lot of times the views that I describe in, uh, that I put forth in the book, my constitutional analysis, is different than my personal political beliefs. I like Merrick Garland. I think he's a great man. I'd love to see him confirmed. Now, I do not, however, believe that the Senate has a duty to, um, that, uh, that, that they are breaching in some very super strong sense um, by not holding a hearing because the Constitution doesn't mention hearings. They don't have to hold a vote, a committee vote, because the Constitution doesn't mention that. Um, they don't have to hold a floor vote. Um, and by the way, even if they did, they could vote no, which I wouldn't want because I want Merrick Garland confirmed. So when the Constitution actually imposes a certain kind of duty, it often says so. It says, when the House and the Senate have passed a bill, the President has to act within 10 days, Sundays accepted. And if he doesn't, that bill becomes a law. And they could have said, whenever the president sends up a nominee, the Senate has a certain number of days, and if they don't act, the person gets on the court. And the Constitution, in fact, doesn't say that. Now, I want Garland confirmed, but, um, and I think that actually it's very unfortunate that he hasn't been, but not because they are, strictly speaking, uh, uh, my, friend, my Republican friends in the Senate are violating the Constitution. Now, let me make the best case for them, and then what should we do? Here's the best case for what the Republicans are doing. They say, yes, Barack Obama won in 2012, but we Republicans won in 2014. We took back the Senate and our constituents sent us to basically thwart his plans, especially anything that he might try to do to project his vision to the future. Half of us were elected on basically a platform, one word platform, no. The other half of us Republicans were elected on a two word platform, hell no. Um, that's actually what our constituents sent us to do, and that's what we're doing. No and hell no. He won 2012. I'm trying to actually really understand what they're saying. He won 2012. We won 2014. It's a standoff. Let's let the people decide. We're going to have a, a tie-breaking election. And if we Republicans win, then um, we're going to put someone else in that vacancy. And if the Democrats win, then they'll have a fresh mandate. That's not, seems to me, a preposterous view that presidential elections are not bugs but features, that direct senatorial elections are not bugs but features. I said earlier, in effect, that all the branches of government are on the ballot. Our Constitution is designed so that presidents and senators pick judges. And the people get to pick presidents and senators, so this election is our chance to weigh in on that. I don't think that presidents should pick justices, but justices should never pick presidents. That's why Bush versus Gore is a disgrace, and I have some um, essays on, on the disgrace that is Bush versus Gore. And I, I'm coming to a close now, so the basic thought here is we, the people, actually are going to, in effect, have a referendum on that open court seat. And if you want Garland, you have to vote for Hillary Clinton and Republican, uh, excuse me, and Democratic senators. And if you don't want Garland, you have to vote for Donald Trump and Republican senators. I had one suggestion that I put forth that has not been adopted. I said, listen, if this election is a referendum on the court, why not have the hearings now? Let Garland make his case. Let his supporters make the, their case. Let his detractors explain why they actually don't think he should be on the court. Let's use this as an opportunity, because we do have an election, to educate the American citizenry about the court and its future. And if we do that, and if Hillary Clinton wins, we can confirm him in November, and now the Supreme, in mid-November, the Supreme Court won't limp along for another term short staff. That was the solution I put forward it was not accepted. Um, but here's what I'll say just in conclusion. My constitutional views are different than my personal views. I'd love to see him confirmed immediately, but I can't stand up and tell you that the Constitution requires a hearing and a vote and a yes vote. Um, let me say one final thing. This issue did come up not so recently, not, not, not so long ago. An ideological president in his last year facing um, uh, a Senate dominated by the other party. Ronald Reagan in 1987, he's as conservative a Republican as Obama is a liberal Democrat, and he faced a Senate of the opposition party, and we got Anthony Kennedy, who the Republicans could agree on and the Democrats. 
Um, and who was the one person most on the Supreme Court who sometimes votes for Republican, Republicans and sometimes with Democrats because almost no one else ever, ever um, uh, crosses the aisle. I think the Republic has been well served by Anthony Kennedy. My own view is that Garland is like that. The Republicans would like him. He'd be their favorite um, Democrat, a kind of um, Joe Lieberman-like person because he's not, he's not an, uh, a Bernie Sanders socialist. He's a, he's a, a person of, of great distinction and moderation. So I, so I wish the Republican Senate had done for him what a Democrat Senate uh, uh, led by Joe Biden and others, then Senator Biden, did for Anthony Kennedy. They didn't. I wish they had. Ours is a more polarized time. I actually talk a lot about political polarization um, in, in the book, but what can you do? You can vote. Mm -hmm.